Hi, welcome to this session. In this session, we will be talking about what is the statistics, the essential of the statistics, the data, types of data, and the various sources from where we can get the data. So we'll start well understanding the concept of the statistics and why do we need it. So statistics, as we can understand, is broadly divided into two divisions. First is the descriptive statistics, and the second is the inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics is one where we can explain uh, by means of graph, by means of numbers. So the most common method of understanding descriptive analysis is mean, median, mode. So these are all ways to explain descriptive statistics. The next is inferential statistics. Here what we are trying to do, we are trying to infer results or understand or analyze the results. So the various methods we can use inferential statistics is correlation, regression, then you can have factor analysis, principal component analysis. So these are some of the common methods that we would be discussing in more details when we would be doing the individual topics on statistics. So basically, inferential statistics talks about all those which are used to infer any results. Now when we start with understanding the concept of data, we can first understand how do we work around the data. So for any data, first what we need is data collection. Second that we need is tabulating that data. Third we need is analyzing the data. Fourth is interpretation of the data. So these are the four basic methods that we use in processing any data. Now, when we are talking about processing a data, we first need to acquire the data. So there are various ways in which we can acquire the data. Now this is a very fundamental thing, but most of the students here get confused as to what is the various types of data. So let's understand the various types of data. So according to the types of data, the first classification we do is the primary data and you have the secondary data. Now what is the difference between primary data and secondary data? For example, I am doing a field survey. I am going to the field and asking people about the basic amenities in their village. So that is a kind of primary survey or primary data because I am having the first hand information about various things. Okay. So this is what is the primary data. And the secondary data what happens is anything which is already being done by someone but I am using the information on behalf of that. For example, census data, population data. This is already conducted by the census. Okay? And what I am doing is, I am just using the available data to further help in my research. For example, if I am doing the analysis of a region of say Ahmedabad and Gujarat, what I would do is, I would use the data and by using the data, from the census, I'll find out, okay, there are so many wards with the municipality and the population per ward is this much. There are so many males, so many females. This is the age group that is most common in the region. So that is all based on the data that I already have. And based on that data, I would be make, making certain kinds of analysis. So that is what is secondary data. For researches, you try, uh, you generally try to use the primary data or the data that you can uh, get on your own. This is one classification. The next classification for data is, data can be described into two ways. First is the qualitative data. And the second is the quantitative data. What is the difference between qualitative data and quantitative data? Qualitative data is describing something by means of the quality. For example, I can say big, medium, small. 
I can say tall, short. I can say fast, slow. So this is all what I am trying to explain by means of the quality of the product or the quality of the thing. The next is quantitative. Quantitative is basically based on numbers. I am trying to analyze the quantity. For example, uh, if I have 10 kg of sugar with me and I get 20 more kgs of sugar. Okay, so I am talking in terms of numbers for sugar and that number would be a quantitative data. But in the same case, if I say, okay, if you are talking about a uh, number, let me give, you a, give me a bank account number. And that would also be a quantitative data, then the answer is perfectly no. Because bank account number is definitely a number. Okay, for example, this is the bank account number. This is definitely a number, but I'm, I cannot use this number for any kind of calculations or it, it does not show the quantity of something or uh, explain the uh, basics for any data. So this bank account number is definitely a number, but it is not a quantitative data. So you need to be very, very clear what is a kind of quantitative data and what is a kind of qualitative data. I've seen the students in senior classes who get very confused with this concept. Okay. Similarly, there is a confusion in the concept of correlation. So be sure that you do not fall into the trap of such confusions. Now next. We would be talking about data sources. We have talked about data, types of data, how to manage data, the various stages in data interpretation, types of statistics, descriptive and inferential. Now for anything that we need, we need to have the source of data. For secondary data, for primary it's okay, I can go to the field and I can do the survey. But data sources for secondary data are very important. So what are the kind of data sources? I would be de dealing the commonly used data sources in India and similar are the data sources for other countries. So the first one that I would be talking about is NSSO. That is National Sample Survey Organization. This is an organization by Government of India which conducts survey across the nation. It has four divisions. The three major issues that it conducts survey is on First, socio-economic conditions. The next is the annual survey of industries. Annual survey of industries. And the last is the agricultural survey. The next important kind of data source is population statistics. Population statistics can be from two sources. One is census and other is vital stats. So vital stats includes the birth, death, marriage, divorce. So these are the vital statistics or the essential statistics in my case, I should say. Then what is census? Census in case of India was established in 1872, was the first census it was conducted. Now census is basically uh, analysis of the population of the region. So you count male, females, literates, non-literates. You count the people engaged in the various types of activities. So these are the common parameters that you try to understand based on age group. <clears throat> so these are the common parameters you try to understand under census. India's census is very important because India has the second largest population in the world next to China. So census becomes an important part. Census around the world is conducted by two methods. First is de facto and next is de jure. De facto is also known as data method and de jure is also known as the period method. So under de facto what happens is, for example, I am a resident of say Delhi, but during the time of census I am residing in Mumbai. So what would happen is I would be counted at the place where I am exactly on the day of census. That is, I would be counted as a uh, person in Mumbai. Okay, That is the de facto method. But this is not used in India. We use the de jure method. De jure method is basically 
based on the period of normal residence. I can go here for two days for a conference, for example, and during that time there was a census survey and I was counted there. But actually I am a resident of Delhi, so I should be counted towards Delhi. So that is what is the jury method. So the data sources we have discussed NSSO, then we have the population statistics. The next important is the agricultural stats. So agricultural statistics or agricultural census is usually conducted every five years, like census data which is conducted every 10 years, the population census which is conducted every 10 years, agricultural stats comes out every five years. Then similar to agricultural st uh, stats, you have stats on livestock and poultry. The next important statistics is your industrial statistics where you talk about the number of industrial workers, where the industry should be established, the, rela the regions in the industries, which areas are being affected. The next is economic census. You talk about the GDP, GNP, NNP, and the economic parameters that govern the country. And the last but the most important is the employment stats. Now employment stats is something that is uh, calculated differently by different organizations. So some of the important organizations that work towards analyzing the employment stats is NSSO, then you have employment market information, the next is you have the population, uh, population census or the census results where you can say which kind of people are em employed in which activity. Then you have economic census, which again talks about employment status. And then the important among these is employment exchange. So these are some of the parameters from where you get statistics on employment. And the most important one is the national income statistics, where you talk about national income and per capita income. So these are some of the major parameters that we have talked about in terms of the essential elements of statistics, data, types of data, and the various sources of data. Stay tuned with us for more uh, topics that we would be covering in statistics. We would be covering the analytical and the descriptive topics like uh, the central tendency, methods of dispersion and deviation. Then we would be talking about net network analysis, factor analysis, probability, and metrics. So stay tuned with more lessons. Have a good day ahead.